the creation long long ago there was nothing neither water earth air nor living creatures then god created light and darkness he named them day and night respectively he formed the sky and heaven above it he made the land the earth and water he then developed plants which would produce beautiful flowers fruit and seeds he also made the sun the moon and stars the sun would give its warmth during the day and the moon its light at night god packed the sea with fish and other sea creatures and fill the earth with all sorts of birds and animals but he felt something was lacking so finally he made human beings man and woman he made them just like him and blessed them he put them in charge of his creation so that they might look after it Then God looked at everything he had created and was mighty pleased. He admired his creation. The garden. God made man to take care of the world he had created. He called him Adam. He created a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. He was called Eden. It had many trees with delicious fruits and beautiful flowers. In the center of the garden stood two great trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. God told Adam that he could eat the fruit of any tree in the garden except that of the tree of knowledge. One day God realized that Adam was lonely so he decided to make Adam a female companion God put Adam in a deep sleep and out of Adam's rib he made a woman Adam called her Eve and loved her dearly both were happy and lived in the garden naked and had no need of clothes the fall among the creatures that god made was a sly serpent one day he asked eve as to why they were not eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge eve told him that god had told them not to do so and they would die if they did the serpent laughingly said it is because you will gain knowledge and become wise like him so a curious eve ate the fruit and gave some to adam as well upon eating the fruit both realized that they were naked so they covered themselves with some leaves when god came Adam and Eve hid behind the tree. God realized that they had eaten the fruit. An angry God banished them from the garden. God said, "From today, Adam will go about in search of food. The woman and the snake would always be enemies. One day, her child will crush the snake's head when he strikes his heel the two brothers in time eve had two sons cain a farmer and abel a shepherd one day cain presented his finest produce to god while abel gave the best sheep God accepted Abel's gift but did not accept Cain's offering. Cain became jealous of Abel. 
God warned Cain that his heart had darkened. But Cain took no notice. Instead, he killed Abel. God knew this. When Cain returned, God was angry and cursed Cain. From this day, you will be a restless wanderer and no land will give you food. Cain begged God to forgive him. But God did not give in. However, God placed a special mark on Cain to make sure that no one would harm him. So Cain left with a heavy heart and went off to live in a garden to the east of Eden. The Boat and the Flood Years passed by. There were many people living on the earth. But many of them had turned evil and had started disobeying God. This made God very angry and he decided to get rid of them all and start again. There was only one man God was pleased with. He was Noah. So God told Noah, I am not pleased with the world. So I am going to cause a great flood to wipe out all life from earth. Make a big boat and fill it with two of every kind of an animal, a male and a female. Store a lot of food for everyone to eat. Take your family into the boat. Noah did just as God had asked. He made a strong boat and filled it with animals and birds and took his family inside. Then he shut the doors. In time, the rain came pouring. The promise. It rained for about 40 days. Everybody was drowned in the water except Noah's boat. When the rain stopped, there was water everywhere. Noah wanted to know what was happening outside. So he sent out a raven and a dove. The raven flew away, but the dove returned finding no place to land. He sent out the dove again after some days. This time it returned with an olive leaf in its beak suggesting that the water had come down. Noah's boat came to rest on a piece of dry land. There he made an altar for God to thank him for saving him and his family. God said to him, I promise that there never will be another flood that destroys life on earth. He then put up a rainbow in the sky as a sign that he would always keep his promise. The Tower Many years went by. The descendants of Noah settled in the land of Shinar. They all spoke the same language. So they decided to make a city with bricks and tower which would reach the clouds. They thought that by doing so, they would become powerful and be envied by other people. God became very sad. The people had developed greed and ambition in their hearts. God knew that once the tower was made, there would be no end to their greed, envy and scheming. So God said, I will mix up their language so that they may not understand each other. In this way, they will not be able to work together to sin against me. So there was total confusion. The construction of the tower came to a stop. The people scattered in different directions 
and had different languages from then on. Abraham Abraham was a man of God. He was 75 years old and had a wife named Sarah. They lived in Ur, but they had no children. One day, God told him to leave his land and live in the land that he showed. Abraham left Ur with his wife, servants, nephew Lot, and his sheep and goats in search of the land God had told him about. They reached the holy place of Shechem. God said to Abraham, I give this land to you and your descendants. Look up and count the stars in the sky. Abraham looked up at a thousand stars shining in the sky. God said, I promise you will have as many descendants one day. But Abraham felt that he and his wife were too old to have children. Yet, a day came when they had their first son, Isaac. The Two Cities Abraham had settled in Canaan, while his nephew Lot settled in Sodom. But the people of Sodom and its neighboring city, Gomorrah, were sinners. So God decided to destroy both the cities. Abraham was fearful for his nephew Lot. So he asked God, If there are ten good people, will you still destroy the city? God replied, If there are ten good people, I will not destroy the city. He sent his angels to warn Lot and his family. The angels said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Shortly afterwards, a terrible storm struck the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire and sulfur from the sky destroyed everything. Lot and his family escaped, but as they were going, Lot's wife turned and looked at the city. Immediately, she turned into a pillar of salt. The Sacrifice Years passed by. God wanted to test Abraham's loyalty. So, he said, Abraham, offer your son Isaac to me as a sacrifice on the mountain that I will show you. Abraham was shocked. But he took his son and sub chopped wood to the mountain God has showed him. After climbing the mountain, he prepared an altar. He then tied up Isaac and laid him on top of the chopped wood. As he took a knife to kill his son, an angel appeared. The angel said, Wait! The God was just testing you and now knows that you are faithful. Just then, Abraham saw a ram tangled by its thorn in a nearby bush. He took the ram and put it in place of a son as a sacrifice for God. Then both went home. Isaac's marriage Abraham wanted to get a wife for his son Isaac. So, he sent his servant to search for a wife for his son. The servant 
took some camels loaded with gifts and started his journey to Mesopotamia. When he reached Mesopotamia, he saw the women of Mesopotamia filling their water jugs at the well. The servant decided to ask for a drink at the well and the woman who would offer to water his camel would be the woman chosen by God to be Isaac's wife. A beautiful woman came to fill her jug at the well. She gave the servant water to drink and watered the camels as well. The beautiful woman's name was Rebecca. The servant told her about Isaac. Her father gave his blessings. Then Rebecca set out for Canaan with the servant. Isaac and Rebecca got married and lived happily. Jacob and Esau Isaac and Rebecca had twin boys, Esau and Jacob. Rebecca loved Jacob more than Esau who was to inherit everything after Isaac had died. But Rebecca and Jacob tricked Esau out of his inheritance. Esau was so angry that Jacob had to flee from Canaan. He decided to head for Mesopotamia. On the way, Jacob rested. He had a dream in which he saw a ladder leading to heaven and angels were climbing down that ladder. He saw God standing beside the ladder. God said, Jacob, you will have as many descendants as the sand particles on the ground. Jacob felt the land to be holy so he poured some oil on the rock he had slept on and named it Bethel, the house of God. Later, Jacob had two wives, Rachel, who bore him twelve sons. He also became rich. When he returned to Canaan, both he and Esau reunited happily. The Colorful Coat Out of Jacob's twelve sons, he loved Joseph the most. When he turned seventeen, Jacob gave him an expensive coat decorated with many colors. Joseph's brothers became jealous. Often Joseph would have wonderful dreams and he could always tell what each dream meant. Once he told his brothers, I dreamt that all of us were tying up bundles of wheat that we had harvested. While mine was straight and tall, yours bowed to mine. Does that mean that you will rule over us? Questioned his enraged brothers. He soon had another dream, but this time the sun, the moon and eleven stars were going down to him. He narrated this dream to his father, but Jacob became very angry and said, You may be my favorite, but we will never bow down to you. Joseph is sold. One day, Joseph's brothers were off with the sheep to the mountains. Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers. His jealous brothers saw him and decided to kill him. No, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him into the well, said Reuben, the eldest brother. Reuben did not want to kill him and planned to rescue Joseph later. The moment Joseph came, 
the brothers pounced on him, took off his special coat and threw him into the well. Reuben went off to tend the sheep while the others sat down to eat. As they were eating, some merchants came there. The brothers sold Joseph to the merchants, who took him along with them. When Reuben came to know about what his brothers had done, he grew sad. The brothers showed Jacob Joseph's coat, which they had soaked in the goat's blood. Jacob cried and cried, thinking Joseph was dead. The Steward's Dream The merchants sold Joseph to a man called Potiphar in Egypt. He was in charge of the royal guards of the pharaoh. Potiphar was pleased with Joseph and put him in charge of his house. This made Potiphar's wife jealous. So she accused Joseph of doing something which he hadn't. An angry Potiphar put Joseph in prison. Among the prisoners was the pharaoh's steward. One day he went to Joseph to seek an explanation for a dream he had. He said, In my dream, I had three bunches of grapes. I squeezed them into the pharaoh's cup and gave the cup to him. Joseph said, This dream means that within three days, the pharaoh will forgive you and you will leave the prison. Just like Joseph had predicted, the pharaoh forgave the steward. The steward went back to the pharaoh, forgetting all about Joseph. Joseph and the Pharaoh's Dream One day, the pharaoh had a strange dream. He dreamt that seven fat cows came out of River Nile. Then seven thin cows came out of the river and ate the seven fat cows. No one could interpret the pharaoh's dream. Suddenly, the steward remembered Joseph and told the pharaoh about him. So, Joseph was called. He said, You dream the future. The seven fat cows are actually the coming seven years when you will have a good harvest. But the next seven years after that will be years of drought. So, I suggest that you start storing the excess harvest for the seven years of drought. The pharaoh was deeply impressed. He made Joseph the governor of Egypt. He was the most important man in Egypt, only next to the pharaoh himself. Joseph had become a rich and respected man. Joseph unites with his family. As per the dream, the seven years of harvest were followed by seven years of drought. But Egypt had enough food. People started coming to Egypt to buy food. Among them were Joseph's brothers. Joseph recognized them, but they could not. Joseph deliberately accused them of being spies, but they denied this. But Joseph kept one brother as a hostage and told them to return with the youngest brother to prove they were not spies. In reality, he wished to see his youngest brother.
His brothers returned with Benjamin. Jacob was happy to see him. While they were leaving, Joseph slipped a silver goblet in Benjamin's bag. The palace guards arrested him for stealing. But the other brothers pleaded that he was innocent. Joseph could not carry on his pretense anymore. He told his brothers who he really was. He told them to get Jacob. So Jacob and the whole family came to Egypt and all of them lived happily together. Moses is born. Many years went by. Joseph's people, the Israelites, grew in number. A new pharaoh came. He did not like the Israelites. He thought they were a threat to the Egyptians, so he made them his slaves. He ordered the killing of all the male babies born to the Israelite women. But there was an Israelite mother who wanted to save her baby. She put him in a reed basket and set him afloat on the river. She told her daughter, Miriam, to keep a watch. The pharaoh's daughter saw the basket. She decided to keep the baby. Miriam, who was standing nearby, suggested, Should I bring an Israelite woman to nurse him? Yes, replied the pharaoh's daughter. Miriam got her own mother who was pleased to nurse her own baby. Now she would be able to look after him. The pharaoh's daughter named the baby Moses. The burning bush. Moses could never overlook the sufferings of his people. One day Moses saw an Egyptian god hitting a slave. He immediately killed the god. But he became the enemy of the pharaoh. So he ran away. He reached Midian and became a shepherd under a man called Jethro. Later, Moses married Jethro's daughter. One day, he saw a burning bush on a mountain which seemed to be on fire, yet it did not burn. Suddenly a voice spoke, Take off your sandals as this is a holy ground. Do not be afraid, Moses. I am God. I have seen your people suffer. I have decided that you will lead them to freedom. What if they don't believe me? asked Moses. Throw your stick on the ground, God ordered. Moses did so and saw the stick turn into a snake. Pick it up by its tail. As Moses did so, it turned into a stick again. God said, now go, I am with you. The Plagues Moses went to the Pharaoh and told him to free the Israelites. But the Pharaoh refused. Yet Moses did not lose hope. He went to the Pharaoh again. This time he warned the Pharaoh saying, Free the Israelites or all the people of Egypt will suffer. There will be nine plagues which are sure to cause great harm. But the Pharaoh did not listen. Soon the plagues came. 
first the river water turned into blood next came the plague of the frogs followed by the stinging gnats and flies then the diseases followed which killed many people of egypt but the pharaoh remained stubborn then arrived the hailstorm next was the plague of the locusts which ate every green leaf then for 3 days there was total darkness in egypt in the ninth plague the first borns of all the animals and humans of the land in egypt were to die the ninth plague the ninth plague was to take place moses did not wish to harm the israelites so god told moses each israelite household should keep a lamb or goat to make a meal and paint some of its blood on the doorpost when the angel of death sees the blood he will pass over and no child will die everyone is to eat with his shoes on and his things packed ready to leave this was the beginning of the feast still celebrated today called passover the next day moses instructed all the israelites to do just that at night the angel of death passed each house taking the lives of all the firstborns and sparing only those whose houses were smeared with blood among those dead firstborns was the pharaoh's only son the grieving pharaoh called moses and ordered him to take all the israelites out of egypt and so all the israelites left egypt with moses leading them crossing the red sea when the israelites had gone the pharaoh repented on what he had done he commanded his troops to bring all the israelites back and punish them the israelites had reached the red sea when they saw the soldiers from afar there was panic ahead was the sea and behind them were the soldiers coming to kill them but moses told them not to worry he raised his hand and suddenly strong winds parted the sea to create a narrow dry path the israelites hurried till they reached dry land the egyptian soldiers also followed the israelites but as soon as the pharaoh's enemy entered the dry path god made the sea roll back in again all the egyptians were drowned in the water the israelites saw all this and realized how powerful god was they rejoiced and sang songs in the name of god the 10 commandments moses led the israelites to mount sinai where god had first spoken to him god called moses and gave him his 10 commandments the first commandment was to put god first this meant that nothing should be more important than god 
The second was that people must not worship idols of stone or wood. The third was that they must keep God's name holy. The fourth was to keep one day for rest. The fifth was to be respectful towards parents. The sixth was not to hurt others. The seventh was not be unfaithful to one another. The eighth was that they must not steal. The ninth was not to tell lies. And the tenth was not to be envious of other people. People made a promise to God to abide by these rules. This promise between God and His people was called the covenant. God would be their God and they would be God's people. The Fall of Jericho Moses had grown old. So he asked God to choose a new leader after he had gone. God chose a man called Joshua. He led the Israelites to Canaan, the promised land. But the city of Jericho was well defended with high walls. Moses drew his last breath looking at the promised land. God told Joshua how to attack Jericho. So Joshua led the people around the city once a day for six days. On the seventh day, they walked seven times. The priest blew the trumpets, the people shouted, and finally, as God had said, the high wall collapsed. Jericho was destroyed as God had ordered. Joshua dedicated all the gold, silver, and other treasures to God's service. He placed a curse on anyone who would rebuild the city. Word spread as to how Joshua had defeated Jericho. They knew that God was there for his people. Brave Gideon with time, people forgot God. This made him angry. So he sent an army of the Midianites to punish them. The Midianites raided the Israelites' farms and stole crops and animals. The Israelites went to God and apologized to him. They asked for his help. God called on Gideon, a poor farmer, and said, You are to drive the army of Midianites out of the city. But first, destroy the altars of all the other gods in the city. Gideon did so. Then he decided to attack the Midianites at night. He gave each of his soldiers a trumpet and a flaming torch hidden in a jug. At night, on his signal, the soldiers sounded the trumpets and broke the jugs. All the noise and the lights gave an impression that a very big army was attacking the Midianites. The Midianites got scared and fled in terror. Gideon won without striking a single blow. Ruth and Boaz Once a terrible famine hit Israel. A man, his wife, 
Naomi and two children left Bethlehem and went to live in the city of Moab. Later, the man died. Naomi had two sons who married Moabite women. But both her sons also died. Naomi longed to go back to Israel. One day, her daughter-in-law Ruth said to her, I cannot see you sad anymore. I want to live in your country with you. So the two women came to Bethlehem. They live near a land owned by her late husband's relative, Boaz. Every day, Ruth would go to the village and take the leftover stalks of corn to feed her mother-in-law and herself. Boaz was impressed to see a young woman working so hard. He arranged for his farm to leave extra stalks of corn for her. In time, Boaz married Ruth. They had a son named Obed. He was to be the grandfather of David. Samuel A woman named Hannah wanted to have a baby. She prayed to God that she would give her son to the temple to serve God if she did have a son. Her prayers were answered and she named her son Samuel. When the son was old enough, she took him to the temple. From that day, her son lived in the temple with Eli the priest. One night, Samuel heard someone calling his name. He thought it was Eli, so he asked, Eli, did you call me? No, Eli replied. But the voice kept calling Samuel. When Samuel went to Eli a third time, Eli understood what was happening. He said, God is calling you, not me. When you hear the voice again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel did as he was told. And from that day on, God spoke to him. He became God's messenger. and Saul. There came a time when the Israelites had to face the Philistines. The Philistines wanted to take over the promised land. The Israelites decided to anoint a king to lead them into the battle. So they asked Samuel to find a suitable king. Samuel chose a handsome man called Saul and consecrated him to the service of God. Initially, Saul proved to be a fine king. He built a powerful army. They fought well against the Philistines. But as time passed, he became arrogant. He spoke against God and disobeyed Samuel. One day, he performed a sacrifice which Samuel was to perform. God became angry and so did Samuel. You have rejected the word of God and God has rejected you as the king. Samuel said to Saul. Though Saul was sorry, yet it was too late. 
Samuel decided to search for a new king for the Israelites. David God wanted Samuel to choose another king after Saul. So, he told Samuel to fill his horn with holy oil and go to Bethlehem and visit a farmer called Jesse. God had chosen one of his sons to become the next king of Israel. So, Samuel went to Bethlehem. He held a feast in honor of God. Jesse and his sons also came. One by one, they introduced themselves. But Samuel did not find the one. Are these all your sons? Samuel asked Jesse. No, my youngest son David is looking after the sheep. Samuel quickly sent for David. When David arrived, Samuel said to him, One day you will be the king of Israel. God has plans for you. Saying this, he anointed David with the holy oil in front of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the God was with him. David and King Saul An evil spirit from God came upon King Saul. He suffered from attacks of madness. So, he asked his servant to get him an accomplished musician who could play music and soothe him whenever he had his attacks. His servant said, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He speaks well and is a fine looking man. He is a brave man who loves God. King Saul told him to bring the boy immediately. So the servant brought David, son of Jesse, to Saul's court. King Saul heard his song and was very happy. And so David would take his harp and play and King Saul would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. David's music had a calming effect on the king. And soon, Saul sent a message to Jesse to let David remain in his service. David and the Joint King Saul's army was fighting against the Philistines. In this army were David's three brothers. One day, Jesse sent David to give them supplies. When David reached camp, he saw a giant man stepping from the Philistine army. His name was Goliath and he was over seven feet tall. Goliath said, I challenge you Israelites to send a warrior to fight me. If he wins, we shall end the war. David exclaimed, I will defeat Goliath. You are but a boy. I cannot let you go, King Saul said. Your Highness, I have defeated lions and bears while protecting my sheep. God was with me then and he will be with me now, David said. King Saul reluctantly agreed. 
David took some smooth stones and a slingshot. Goliath laughed loudly, seeing that a boy had come to fight him. While he was laughing, David took a stone, put it in his slingshot and struck Goliath on his forehead. Goliath fell down dead. David in danger King Saul made David commander of his army. He became very popular. King Saul was jealous of David's popularity. He thought that David would become the king. So, one day King Saul threw his spear at David. However, it missed. But from then, David was on the run. He could not understand why the king was trying to kill him. One day, King Saul and his soldiers came near the cave where David had been hiding. When everyone was asleep, David crept towards King Saul and cut a part of his robe. In the morning, he came out of the cave holding the torn piece of cloth. Showing it to kill Saul, he said, See how close I came to kill you, but I did not. Then why do you want to kill me? Saul was overcome with guilt. He apologized to David for his behavior. The Ark Comes to Jerusalem After David had become the king, he needed a capital city. So he captured Jerusalem and made it his capital city. He decided to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem as he wanted to make it the city of God. The Ark contained the Ten Commandments. And so David sent for the Ark. It was brought with a great procession. Thousands of people came along. Musicians played their music and people danced. David threw off his robe and danced for joy in front of the ark. He blessed the people and gave them cakes and wines. The people played pipes and tambourines in praise of the Lord. The ark was kept in a tent where it would be till the time a special place was built for it. David decided to build a temple in praise of God. The Revolt King David was growing old. He had many sons. He loved them equally. But they were fighting amongst one another to acquire the throne. One day, Amnon, David's eldest son, was murdered by Absalom, the younger son. After that, Absalom revolted against David. But David loved him too much and wanted to fight back. David warned his men to be gentle with his son Absalom and to protect him. The rebellions lost and were put to flight. Absalom himself had to run away on a mule. As the mule galloped through the trees, he passed under an old oak tree. Absalom's long hair got in 
tangled in the branches, leaving him dangling helplessly as his mule ran away. Soon, David's soldiers found him. Taking it as an opportunity, they killed Absalom. David was in shock. He cried and cried in grief. There were no celebrations, just grief. King Solomon King David made his son Solomon the next king after him. Solomon realized that he was too inexperienced to rule over such a big nation. So he prayed to God to help him. One night, God appeared in Solomon's dream and asked, What do you desire? Solomon replied, Please grant me wisdom. God was pleased and said, You could have asked me for anything, but you asked for wisdom. I shall grant you your wish. You will also have success and riches. If you obey me and abide by my rules, you will be a great king. I promise you that. Thus, Solomon turned out to be a great king. Thousands of people thronged to see him. They brought their problems before him and he solved them wisely. His name spread far and wide. People from all over the world visited his court and paid him tributes. His tales of wisdom spread everywhere. King Solomon's Wisdom One day, two women came to King Solomon's court with a problem. The first woman said, She has stolen my baby as her baby had died. But she denies the fact that she stole my baby. The second woman exclaimed, You are lying. This baby is mine. It is not yours. King Solomon heard everything and then sent for his guard and said, Cut the baby into half and give one half to each of these women. The first woman was shocked and pleaded, Please don't kill the baby. Give him to the other woman. But the other woman said, No, you can't cut him. This way, neither of us will have a baby and it will resolve our quarrel. King Solomon smiled. He now knew who the real mother was. He handed the baby to the first woman and the other woman looked in fear. Everyone in the court applauded his wisdom. Solomon's Temple King Solomon built a temple to keep the Ark of Covenant as his father David had desired. The temple took seven years to finish. Different types of wood were used to build the temple. Gold, silver, precious stones and blocks of stone were brought from far. The doors of the temple were made of bronze. The walls had intricate carvings of flowers and trees. Gold was used for the altars as well as the inner temple, where the ark was to be kept. 
When everything was completed, the priests brought the holy chest inside the temple. King Solomon prayed to God to bless his people and his kingdom. God said, Solomon, I hear your prayers. From today, I will live in this temple. But if you turn away from me, I will leave and harm will come to pass on Israel. Queen of Sheba Solomon went on to become a great king. He had a lot of wealth and a big army. His kingdom became famous for its and travelers from everywhere came to view its splendor with their own eyes. Solomon also built a magnificent palace in Jerusalem. It took 13 years to complete. The glory of Solomon had spread far and wide. One day, the Queen of Sheba came to visit Jerusalem. She wanted to see if the tales she had heard about King Solomon were true or not. She brought many gifts with her. But she she brought many gifts with her. But she also asked him many questions from her heart. Yet he answered them all, showing his great wisdom. She was truly amazed. There was peace and prosperity in Solomon's kingdom. She said, Israel is fortunate to have a king like you. She returned home with many gifts from Solomon. Solomon annoys God. King Solomon was very rich, but he always managed to spend more than he had. So, he used to take loans. And in order to clear his debts, he would divide taxes on his people. Solomon had many wives. They belonged to different countries. Thus, their gods too were different. Solomon made temples for their gods and started worshipping them too. He was turning away from his God. All this made God angry. God appeared to him twice to warn him against worshipping the other gods. But Solomon didn't listen. So God said to Solomon, You have turned away from me, so I will take everything away from you. But for the sake of David, none of this will happen in your lifetime, but in your son's life. And true to God's word, when Solomon's son Rehoboam became the king, he faced many problems. Elijah After King Solomon had died, many kings came and went. Of these, one was Ahab. He married a woman called Jezebel. She started getting all the prophets of God killed. So God decided to curse Israel with long-lasting drought. He sent his messenger, Elijah, to warn King Ahab. But Ahab paid no heed. So, the drought came to Israel. But Elijah had to hide in the desert to escape Jezebel. The ravens would bring him bread and meat. God then sent Elijah to the city of Sidon. There Elijah saw an old woman and asked her for food. The woman was poor and had a son, but she made a meal for all three of them. Elijah said, 
your jug will never be empty of your flour and your oil will not run out till the drought ends she discovered that what elijah had said was true one day the old woman's son died elijah prayed for her son slowly the boy opened his eyes the old woman exclaimed now i am sure that you are god's man the fire Ahab had started worshiping a god called Baal. Elijah revisited Ahab and said, "I have come to challenge your god. Let the people see which is the greater, yours or mine. Come to Mount Carmel and bring 450 prophets along with you." The next day, Elijah instructed the prophets to make an altar for Baal while he would make one for his god no one will light the fire let the true god light the fire in the altar he loudly exclaimed the prophets of Baal sang loudly danced and prayed for hours yet there was no fire then elijah loudly spoke to the skies above lord show the people that you are their god send fire to this altar immediately fire poured down from the sky and the altar got fire the people instantly bowed down and started chanting god's name naboth's vineyard Next to King Ahab's palace was a beautiful vineyard. King Ahab wanted to buy the vineyard, but its owner Naboth refused to sell it. King Ahab was angry, but his cunning wife wrote a letter to the officials to charge Naboth of speaking against God. Poor Nebat was put to death for crimes he had never committed. Ahab was happy and quickly went to the vineyard. But he saw Elijah standing there. Elijah said angrily, "You have committed the most evil sin. You have killed an innocent man for your personal gains." You will be punished for this. Ahab felt bad. He immediately took off his royal robes and wore sackcloth. He refused to eat and fell into deep despair. When God saw that Ahab was sorry, he decided to be merciful. He decided that Ahab would not suffer. but his descendants would the woman from shunem elijah chose elisha as a successor elisha used to visit shunem often there he used to stay at a rich lady's house she had specially built a room for him on the terrace elisha was thankful for all that the woman had done for him he wanted to repay her kindness so he asked his servant what he could do well i am sure that she would like a son said the servant and so the next day elisha said to the woman next year by this time You will have a son in your arms. And so she did. But one day her son became very ill and died. The woman came to Elisha who was in Shunem then. Elisha prayed silently. 
He then breathed air into the boy's mouth. Suddenly, the little boy sneezed. He was alive. The woman thanked Elisha profusely. Elisha and Naaman Israel fought wars with many countries. Among them was Syria. The Syrian army was led by a general named Naaman. The general suffered from a terrible skin disease. Many doctors examined him, but none could cure it. Naaman's wife had an Israelite servant. The servant told Naaman's wife that there was a priest named Elisha in Israel who could cure Naaman. The general's wife told her husband about Elisha. And so, General Naaman came to Elisha. There, he was told to bathe in River Jordan seven times. The general exclaimed, Bathe in the river seven times. I could have done that in Syria. But a servant said, the prophet could have given you a more difficult task, but he did not. So, do this task quickly. So, Naman bathed seven times and his disease got cured. He thanked Elisha. Jerusalem is saved. When King Hezekiah was ruling over Judah, the Assyrians made several attacks on Judah. Their aim was to conquer Jerusalem. King Hezekiah did all he could to protect the city. He got strong walls built, weapons were made, and he did many other things. Then he went to prophet Isaiah to seek his advice. Isaiah assured him that the city would not fall to the Assyrians, as this was God's promise. But the king of Assyria sent a letter to king Hezekiah, which read, No God can help you. Do you think you can escape from us? King Hezekiah got scared. He took the letter and went to the temple. He prayed to God and asked for help. As he finished praying, Isaiah told him, Your prayers have been heard. Do not worry. God has promised to protect Jerusalem and its people. The same night, thousands of Assyrian soldiers died mysteriously. The rest fled back and never came back. Isaiah's Warning to King Hezekiah A time came when Hezekiah became so ill that he was on the verge of dying. But with Isaiah but with Isaiah's help and praying to God, he finally recovered. The people were very happy. The news of his recovery spread everywhere. Soon the ambassador of Babylon came to see him. He brought many precious gifts from Babylon. King Hezekiah was pleased. He showed the ambassador his treasury, storehouses, and so on. When Isaiah asked about Hezekiah, who told the ambassador from Babylon, the king gave his report. Isaiah was taken up. He warned the king, Be careful! A time will come when everything will be taken to Babylon, including 
your very own sons but hezekiah paid no heed to isaiah's warning as long as he was unaffected he was not worried king josiah during the reign of josiah the repairing of the temple of jerusalem took place one day one of his advisers brought a book to him containing the 10 commandments with time it had got lost as the people of judah had turned away from god josiah read the book and became upset he realized that people were not following anything that was written they were worshiping false gods josiah read the book to his people in the court he proclaimed from today i promise to live by the 10 commandments we will honor and worship our god and follow his teachings and on Josiah's order all the other temples altars and shrines were destroyed then for the first time after many years the people celebrated the passover the prisoners in babylon after Josiah's death people forgot the 10 commandments though prophet jeremiah warned them of the consequences yet the people of judah ignored his warnings soon king nebuchadnezzar of babylon attacked judea the babylonian army burned and looted everything They stole many treasures from God's temple. They also took the people of Judah as prisoners. In Babylon, the people of Judah were longing to go home. But their hope was dying. So God called Jeremiah and Ezekiel. He said, "Tell the people that I am still with them." they should settle in babylon and abide by the 10 commandments soon i will bring them back and there will be happiness when the prophets told the people all that god had said they had hope once again it made them strong to think that god was with them Nehemiah rebuilds Jerusalem. A time came when the Persians conquered Babylon. All the Jewish people were returned to their homeland. Nehemiah was a high official in the court of the Persian king. He was a Jew. When he heard that the city of his ancestors was still in ruins, He was very sad. He wanted to go there and rebuild the city himself. The Persian king was a good man. He gave permission. Before Nehemiah met the leaders, he assessed the work that needed to be done. Then he called all the leaders of Jerusalem and said to them, I have been sent to rebuild the city walls. There is God's will in this. The leaders agreed to help. Nehemiah made the people work very hard. Finally, a day came when the city was complete. There was great celebration and prayers were offered to God. A procession was taken out which lasted for 7 days. Jeremiah, messenger of God. Jeremiah was a simple man. 
God chose him as his messenger. But Jeremiah was afraid. He said, My Lord, I do not know how to speak your words. I am quite young. God gave an example of a potter to Jeremiah. He said, A potter makes a pot, but sometimes the pot loses its shape. So the potter makes it again and the pot comes out fine. Jeremiah, I have chosen you. I have put my words in your mouth. Do not fear anything. I am with you. If people follow my commandments and live in peace, I will make them good and strong. Jeremiah gained confidence after hearing these words. He was no longer afraid as he had God by his side. Poor Jeremiah God's man Jeremiah cautioned the people of Israel of grave consequences if they did not pray to God. But the people paid no heed. The leaders of the city hated Jeremiah. They turned the king against Jeremiah. The king was too weak to revolt against the city leaders. Do whatever you wish, he said to them. They put Jeremiah in a well so that he might starve to death. One of the royal servants heard about what had been done to Jeremiah. He approached the king and said, Sir, I have heard that the city leaders have thrown Jeremiah into a well. He might die there without any food or water. His death will lead to a great disaster. All of us will suffer. He is a man of God, so we must rescue him. The king immediately sent his men to rescue Jeremiah. Though Jeremiah was saved, Yet people still paid no attention to his words. Daniel and the Lions When the Israelites were taken as prisoners to Babylon, a small boy named Daniel was also among them. He grew to be very wise, and King Darius made him his chief advisor. The other officials became jealous. They thought the only way to get rid of him was if they made a law against his god. So they went to King Darius and said, You are so wonderful that no one should pray to anyone but you. Anyone who prays to any other god should be thrown into the lion's den. The king agreed, but Daniel prayed to his god, so he was arrested. The king had to put Daniel into the den of lions. But the king was not happy about his decision. so. He went to the lion's den to see Daniel. But the lions had not harmed him. Daniel's God had saved him. King Darius released Daniel and proclaimed that everyone was to respect Daniel's God. Hosea the Sufferer Hosea was a young preacher in Israel. He was a contemporary of the prophets Isaiah and Amos. He had married a woman named Gomer, who always wanted to have fun and go to adventures. They had three children. 
But one day, Guma left home for good. Hosea went to find her. When he did, he asked her to return. Even though Kosia returned, yet she left him time and again. At last, Hosea gave up. He raised his three children on his own. But he was unlucky here also, as they too left him when they came of age. Hosea led a miserable life, but it taught him a lot about God. He learned that Israel was God's wife. And like Gomer, she would be repeatedly treacherous to God. And although God might punish her, yet he would always take her back. Prophet Amos Amos was a shepherd before he became a prophet. He lived in the kingdom of Judah but preached in the northern kingdom of Israel. One day, he went to the prosperous town of Bethel. He was quite distraught to see what it had become. The people had acquired their riches through immoral means. They cheated the poor, offered loans with high interests, and if the poor were unable to repay, they would grab the lands. At times, they made them slaves. The courts also sided with the rich. There was no justice. A furious Amos spoke. You must see God or you will be punished. People from outside will seize your land. You will be taken as prisoners. But there is still hope. Return to God. If you will, He will help you. You will be prosperous once again. Jonah in the Storm Jonah was a prophet. God told him to go to the city of Nineveh to tell the people to mend their wicked ways. But Jonah did not go there. Instead, he took a ship to run away as far as he could. An angry God sent a fierce storm in the sea. Jonah knew that God was angry. He said to the captain, If you throw me into the sea, the storm will stop. In the sea, a fish swallowed Jonah. After three days and three nights, the fish spat him out. Jonah said to God, Forgive me. I was thoughtless and got frightful. But now I will go to the city of Nineveh. And so Jonah went there and told the people of God's warning. The people became remorseful. God forgave them. But Jonah was angry as to why God had forgiven them. So God said, I love all the people of the world and not just Israel. Prophet Micah Micah was a prophet who lived in a small town in Judah. He saw that people were slowly forgetting God. They were becoming greedy and deceitful. Even the priest had turned evil. They would twist the laws of God to suit themselves. The rich were getting richer while the poor were getting poorer. Micah warned the people saying, 
the Lord will punish you for your evil ways. But the people paid no heed to his warning. Their thinking was that God was in his holy temple and would always shield them. But Micah told them, One day God will walk away from the temple. If you remain like this, Jerusalem will be reduced to ruins. There will be a forest in place of the holy temple. In the future, a man from Bethlehem will come to rule Israel. He will be God's messenger. Zechariah is blessed. In Judea, there lived a priest named Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth. They did not have a child, so they were very unhappy. One day, an angel appeared in front of Zechariah. The angel said, I am Gabriel and have been sent by God. Soon, your wife will have a baby boy who shall be called John. He will bring great joy to you both and peace to the world. Through him, many people will turn to God. Zechariah could not believe this as he and his wife were past age to bear children. The angel sensed his disbelief and said, Since you doubt my words, you will not be able to talk till all that I have told you comes true. So Zechariah could not talk and could only make gestures. After a short time, Elizabeth became pregnant. She was overjoyed that God had chosen her. An angel appears to Mary. After six months of visiting Elizabeth, Angel Gabriel visited Mary. She was Elizabeth's cousin and lived in a small town in Galilee called Nazareth. Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, a descendant of King David. The angel told Mary, You have been chosen to give birth to a son of God. He must be called Jesus, and the Lord would give him the throne of David to rule over the people of Israel. Mary was surprised as she was unmarried. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come to you. God's grace will be with you. Your cousin Elizabeth is also going to have a baby, even though she is quite old. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. Mary bowed her head to the angel and said, that she would be faithful to her Lord and gladly accepted anything that the Lord had wished for her. When she looked up, the angel had gone. Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. After angel Gabriel had visited Mary, she went to Judea to see her cousin Elizabeth as she came to know that Elizabeth was also expecting a baby. Elizabeth met her at the door with a big smile. Elizabeth said to Mary, When I heard your voice, the baby inside me leaped. Now I must ask you, why has the mother of my Lord come to see me? You are the most blessed of women. Your child also will be blessed. She was glad that Mary had come to visit her. 
Mary had faith that God would fulfill what he had promised and was very happy. She joyfully praised God saying, My soul praises the greatness of God. The mighty one has done great things for me. His name is holy. Mary visited Elizabeth for about 3 months. Then she went back to Nazareth to her own home. Elizabeth gives birth to a son. Soon afterwards, Elizabeth gave birth to a son. The relatives hearing the good news rejoiced. They praised the Lord. After 8 days, the joyful couple Zechariah and Elizabeth visited the temple with their baby. The relatives suggested that the baby be named Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth said that his name would be John. They waited for Zechariah's reaction on this, but he could not speak because of what angel Gabriel had said. Zechariah remembered God's command. So, he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, "His name is John." From that time on, Zechariah was able to speak. At once, he started singing in praise of the Lord and thanked him. Soon, the news that a special child had been born to Elizabeth spread throughout Judea. All those who heard that news felt that this was a special event and that God was with the child. Baby Jesus is born. When Joseph heard that Mary was already expecting a child, he was upset and confused. But that night an angel appeared in his dream who assured him that all would be well and that he must marry Mary as the baby was a gift from the Lord the child was to be called Jesus when Joseph woke up the next day he was not upset any more at that time The government decided that they should count everyone that lived in that area of the world. So, Joseph took Mary, who was due to have the baby, to his hometown, Bethlehem. The town was crowded, so the couple stayed in a stable. That night, Mary delivered her baby. and she wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger where the hay for animals was kept the shepherds and baby jesus in the hills some shepherds were looking after the sheep suddenly they saw a dazzling light in the sky it was so dazzling that they closed their eyes When they opened their eyes a beautiful angel was in the air just above them it said do not be afraid as i bring great news for all of you today in bethlehem a baby is born who will save the world it is lying in a manger the surprised shepherds looked at one another in amazement they decided to go to bethlehem to see the baby they ran as fast as they could and soon found mary joseph and baby jesus the shepherds fell to their knees when they saw jesus they were filled with joy that they had found the lord They left happily and began shouting in the streets and telling everyone about what they had seen and about the arrival of baby Jesus. 
the news of the birth of Jesus spread far and wide. The Three Wise Men Three wise men were traveling one night when they noticed a very strange star in the sky. They knew that this star meant that the king of the Jews, the one who would save the world, had been born. First, they went to King Herod to ask about the baby. When King Herod heard about the baby, he was worried. He said to the wise men, Go and find this child. As soon as you find him, tell me so that I may go and worship him. The three wise men followed the new star right to the stable where baby Jesus lay. They presented him with three gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. The wise men left the stable but did not return to King Herod, as a dream had warned them not to do so. Living in Egypt As the wise men left, an angel warned Joseph in a dream that King Herod was determined to kill Jesus. He told Joseph to take his family to Egypt where they would be safe. So Joseph along with Mary and baby Jesus moved to Egypt. Meanwhile, King Herod could not find the three wise men. He got angry as he felt cheated. He gave the order to kill every child below the age of two years in the area around Bethlehem. Many children were killed, but Jesus remained safe in Egypt. Shortly after this, Herod died. The angel visited Joseph again and told him to go back to the homeland as the danger was over. But as they were returning, Joseph heard that Herod's son was the new king. So the family traveled further north and settled in the city of Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus in the Temple Joseph and Mary used to go to Jerusalem to attend the festival of Passover each year. When Jesus was 12 years old, they took him too. After the festivities were over, Joseph and Mary left for home along with the others. They had traveled for a day when they realized that Jesus was missing. He was not with his friends or their relatives. So the worried couple returned to Jerusalem. They searched for him for three days. Finally, they visited the temple again. And Jesus was there, surrounded by priests. The priests were impressed by the young boy's knowledge and wisdom. Mary asked him, How could you have left us like this? Why did you not tell us where you were? To this, Jesus calmly replied, I thought you would know that I would be in my father's house. The parents did not understand this answer, but Jesus left the temple and returned to Nazareth. Jesus is baptized. John, the Baptist, was preaching others to change their life. He led a simple life. For food, he would eat honey, wild berries, and insects. People would come from far and near just to hear him preach. 
they would confess their sins and he in return would bless them and baptize them with water from river jordan john knew that one day a great man would come and he would baptize the people with the fire of the holy spirit one day jesus came to john to be baptized seeing him john knew at once that the great man had come he said it is you who should baptize me jesus replied let us do what the lord asks of you so john baptized jesus and as soon as jesus was baptized the sky opened up and the holy spirit came like a dove then god said this is my son and i am pleased with him satan tempts jesus jesus went into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days at the end of 40 days jesus was tired and hungry the devil satan came to tempt him he asked why don't you turn these stones into bread if you are the son of god jesus replied The scriptures say that we cannot survive on bread alone. We also need the words of God. Satan made another attempt. He led Jesus to Jerusalem and to the temple and asked, "Why don't you throw yourself off from here?" The scriptures say that God will send his angels to save you. Jesus replied But the scriptures also say that one must not put one's god to test Satan took Jesus to a mountain from where he could see the world and said If you worship me then all that you see will be yours Jesus replied We must only worship our god and nobody else Satan disappeared as he was defeated. Jesus and his first disciples. Jesus was spreading God's words in Galilee. One day, as he was walking along the shore, he saw two boats. Jesus stepped into one boat and requested the owners Andrew and Simon to take the boat deeper into the sea. He asked them to throw the net into the water. The fishermen were reluctant as they had been unsuccessful in catching any fish. But they obeyed Jesus. To their wonder, They caught so many fish that they were not able to pull the net into the boat. Their friends James and John had to get their boat to help them. Seeing the miracle, all four fell at Jesus' feet, scared. Jesus told them not to be scared and to follow him. They left their trade and decided to follow Jesus. They became his first disciples. The miracle. Once there was a marriage feast at Cana in Galilee. Mary and Jesus were also invited. As they were sitting down to eat, Mary noticed that the wine jars were already empty. She told Jesus to help. Jesus saw six large water pitchers lined against a wall. Jesus instructed the servant to fill those pitchers with water. 
after the steward had done so he told him to take the water to the guest of honor to taste it the servant took the water to the guest of honor who was sitting near the bridegroom the guest of honor took the water and tasted it the water had turned into wine he exclaimed this wine is very good the bridegroom must have saved this for the last This miracle at the wedding was the first one by Jesus. It strengthened the disciples' faith in him. The sick mother-in-law. Jesus was spreading God's message in Capernaum. In that town lived a man named Simon Peter with his wife and mother-in-law. Jesus would often visit him. One day on his visit he saw that the mother-in-law had high fever. Jesus came to the bed of the mother-in-law and ordered the fever to go away. And to everyone's surprise the fever left. Simon's mother-in-law got up and went back to the kitchen she started preparing food as if nothing had happened quickly word spread about how jesus had cured simon peter's mother-in-law soon people who sought to be healed and those suffering in some way gathered there Jesus did not drive them away. He healed all of them by laying his hands on them. The next day, Jesus left Simon's house. He wished to find another place where he could preach about the kingdom of God. The sower Jesus taught many lessons using parables. Once he told the crowd gathered around him a story about a farmer. A farmer was dispersing seeds in the soil. Some seeds fell on the pathway and birds ate them. Some fell on the rocks. The plants grew for a short time and died in the heat of the sun. Some seeds fell into the thorns which grew faster than the plants choking them but some fell on rich fertile soil where they grew well giving a good crop Jesus explained God's words are like the seeds some people often hear what God says but the words do not register many have shallow hearts like the rocky ground some people hear the words but are more interested in the worldly things but some people believe in god's words and these grow like seeds on fertile soil the sick servant after preaching throughout the land for many days jesus returned to the city of capernaum there some elders told him that a roman officer's servant was very ill the servant was much loved by the officer the officer was a good man He had built the synagogue in the town for the people and had done much to help the people. Jesus decided to visit the servant. Jesus was near the house when the officer came out and said, "Do not put yourself in trouble. 
I am not worthy enough for you to enter my house. If you just say the word, my servant will be healed. Jesus was surprised by such display of faith. He praised the officer in front of the people who had followed him. Meanwhile, when the people went in to see the servant, he had healed completely. Simon the Pharisee A Pharisee named Simon invited Jesus to dinner one night. The Pharisees were religious leaders. Many of them did not like Jesus because he taught everyone about God's love. Just as Jesus sat down to eat, a woman came into the house. The guest said, Look, there's that very bad woman. The woman knelt down before Jesus, crying softly. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them with her hair. Then the woman reached into the folds of her dress. She took out a tiny bottle of very expensive perfume. She poured the rich perfume over Jesus' feet. This meant she thought of him as her king. Simon became more and more upset. He thought if Jesus were really a prophet, he would know what kind of woman she is. Jesus knew what he was thinking. Simon, he said, I want to tell you a story. The Two Moneylenders Two men borrowed money from a moneylender. One borrowed 500 silver coins and the other 50. Both of them were unable to repay. The moneylender was a nice man, so he cancelled their debts. At the end of the story, Jesus asked Simon, the Pharisee, which man out of the two would be more indebted? Simon replied, The one who had borrowed the larger sum. Jesus continued, When I entered your house, you did not give me the kiss of friendship. Neither did you wash my feet or anoint my head with oil. On the other hand, this woman of countless sins showed so much love ever since I came here. Jesus said to the woman that all her sins had been forgiven and it was indeed her faith which had saved her. All the men wondered how he had the right to forgive sins. Jesus and the Blind Beggar Once Jesus was in the town of Jericho. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus came to know about this. He had heard about the miracles Jesus had performed. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. He shouted again and again till Jesus heard him. Jesus told his followers to bring the beggar to him. When Bartimaeus was brought to him, 
Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do? The beggar replied, Have pity on me, son of David. Let me see again. Jesus said to him, Regain your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, Bartimaeus regained his sight. He was very happy. Bartimaeus praised Jesus and became his follower. Jairus's Daughter Once, the daughter of a man named Jairus was very ill. She was just 12 years old. Jairus went to Jesus for help. Jesus told Jairus to take him immediately to his house. When they reached the house, they found people wailing and crying. They said to Jesus, Why do you come here? She is already dead. There is nothing you can do. But Jesus said, she is not dead. She is sleeping. The people laughed and did not believe him. Jesus went inside the house and did not allow the people to enter. Then Jesus held the little girl's hand and said softly, Little girl, get up from your bed. The girl got up from the bed as though she had been in deep asleep. She went and hugged her parents. Jesus told her parents to give her some food. He also told the surprised parents not to tell anyone about what had taken place. Jesus and His Followers one day, a man said to Jesus, I wish to be your follower. Jesus replied, It is not easy. The Son of God has no place to rest himself. Jesus chose 72 disciples and 12 followers. All were very close to him. He sent them in different directions to prepare the towns and villages he was planning to visit. He told them, When you go to a house, the first words you must say should be, Peace to this house. If the people are good, they will be blessed. They will also offer you their hospitality. You must help all those who come to you and cure the sick as well. If they listen to you, it means they listen to me. But if they do not listen to you, they are denying the words of my Heavenly Father as well. The farmer. One day, Jesus told his people the story of a farmer blowing his field. Blowing was a hard task. The farmer used one hand to hold down the wooden plow, and with the other, he used to guide the bull. It was difficult to blow on a hot day, but the farmer would carry on and never look back even once. Not until what he had started was complete. Hearing this, a man declared his wish of becoming Jesus' follower. He said, Lord, I want to be your disciple. But before I do, I wish to visit my family and friends 
and say goodbye to them. Jesus heard him and said, Once a man has started walking towards the Lord and has started spreading his message, he never turns back. If he does, then he is not worthy of being in God's kingdom. Simon Peter's reply there was a time when Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee and reached the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He spread his teachings there. He warned the people against the Pharisees and the Sadducees who tried to destroy people's faith in him. One day, Jesus asked his followers, Who do people think I am? The followers kept thinking and then replied, Some think you are a prophet, some think you are John the Baptist, some also think you are Elijah or Jeremy. Jesus then asked, who do you think I am? Simon Peter immediately answered, You are Christ, the Son of God. Jesus was happy that Simon Peter believed in him. He said, You are Peter. It means rock. It is upon you that I will build a church. It will stand firm for good against evil and heaven will be with you. Jesus reveals his secret. One day, Jesus revealed his secret to his disciples. He told him that he was the son of God. He would go to Jerusalem where he would suffer at the hands of the Jewish leaders and later he would die. But on the third day after his death, he would rise to life again. Jesus told his disciples to keep this a secret. His disciples were shocked. They never expected any suffering or death to come their way. They had thought that Jesus would lead them to the gates of the kingdom of their beloved God. A shocked Peter took Jesus aside and said, Lord, you must not do that. Jesus scolded him comparing him to Satan. He said, Peter, you are selfish. You do not care for the Lord. You are stopping me from fulfilling my mission. Only in my death will what I want to be achieved. The change a week after revealing his secret, Jesus took three of his closest disciples, Peter, James and John, up a high mountain, Mount Hermon, to pray. Suddenly, they saw the appearance of Jesus changing. His face started shining brighter than the sun and his robes became brighter than all the snow around. Then Moses and Elijah appeared and started talking to Jesus. The three disciples were terrified. Then a bright cloud passed over and the voice of God was heard. Jesus is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. You must listen to him. The three scared disciples fell on their knees and covered their faces. 
Jesus came to them and said, Do not be afraid. When they looked up, they saw only Jesus. While coming down the mountain, Jesus warned them that they must not tell anyone about this till the time he died and rose again from the dead. The Two Sisters Once Jesus arrived in a small village called Bethany. He was invited to the house of Mary and Martha. They were two sisters. While Martha would hurry around the house all day long to make it neat and proper for the guest, and her sister Mary would do nothing. After a while, this fact bothered Martha. She felt that while she was working so hard, her sister would just sit at Jesus' feet and not contribute in the household work at all. Finally, she went to Jesus and complained. She said, Lord, while I work, Mary does nothing. She just sits at your feet. It is not fair. Jesus replied calmly, Mary is wise. While you worry about worldly things, Mary listens to me. It is more important to listen to me while I am here. Then be engaged in the household work all the time. Jesus and praying to God. Jesus was a man of God. He loved to pray to God. There were times when he would go and pray alone. According to him, it was necessary to have some time alone with God during a day. One day, his disciples asked him how to pray to God. Jesus replied, While praying, you should say, Father, may your name always be held holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day the bread we need and forgive our sins just as we forgive others who have done us wrong. Do not put us to the test, but keep us safe from all evil. He further mentioned that while praying, one should tell God what one needs. There should be no holding back from God. He will give you what you want only if you believe in him fully. The friend and the neighbor. The disciples asked Jesus as to how to pray to God. Jesus decided to explain by giving an example. He said, A man's friend came to his house at midnight. The tired friend asked for some food as he was hungry. But the man did not have any food to give him. So the friend went to the neighbor's house. The neighbor got hassled at being woken up so late. He tried to send the friend away, but the friend did not budge an inch. He kept asking for food. Finally, the poor neighbor gave him food. Similarly, God is like your neighbor. He will take time to listen to you, but he will give you what you want. He will never turn you away. He never turns away 
any one who comes to his door for help. You must keep persisting and not be scared. Jesus in Samaria Once, while spreading the message of God, Jesus and his followers stopped in the town of Samaria. While Jesus rested near a well, the Samaritan women came to the well to draw some water. Jesus asked her for water as he was thirsty. The Samaritan woman was refused. The Jews did not like the Samaritans. Curious, she asked Jesus as to why he would do that. Jesus replied, If you only knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink. The woman said, Although my people worship God in their own way, yet I know that, that a Messiah will come who tells us the truth and lead us to salvation. Jesus replied, It is the Messiah you are talking to now. The surprised woman ran back to the town to tell the news of the Messiah's visit. Soon, a crowd had gathered around Jesus to hear his teachings. The Fight Over Wealth Once a Jew died. His sons fought over how much of his wealth should each get. One of the sons went to Jesus. The son said, after my father had died, everyone has been fighting over the distribution of wealth. My brothers refuses to give me my due which our father left behind as inheritance. Please solve my problem. Jesus heard him and then spoke to the people gathered there. He said, all of you need to learn from this. It is what is inside you which really matters. Wealth is not important. You may be judged on the number of possessions you own, but the important thing is that you must try to make yourself richer in the eyes of the Lord. Stay away from being greedy. It only causes destruction. The Levin One day, Jesus wished to describe the kingdom of God to his followers. He described it in the form of the process of making bread. He mentioned that women wake up early to make bread for the family. They first grind the grains between two milestones to make flour. After that, they mix some salt and water to the wheat flour and knead it to form soft dough. They then add leaven, yeast, to the dough to make it rise and make bread out of it. Without leaven, the dough would remain flat. Jesus concluded, a little bit of leaven changes the whole dough. Without it, one cannot make bread. The Spirit of God is like leaven. It is present in the hearts of few, but the ones who possess it have the power to change the whole world just like leaving in the door. The Rich Man Once a rich man was looking for a way by which he could gain eternal life. So he went to Jesus for help. Jesus asked, Do you follow all the commandments? 
The rich man replied that he did follow the commandments strictly. The rich man wanted to know if there was anything else that he could do. Jesus replied, If you really want eternal life, then distribute all your wealth among the poor and join me in spreading the word of God. The rich man was shaken. He did not wish to part with his wealth. Jesus looked at him in sympathy. He knew how difficult it was for such a rich man to give up everything. Jesus asked, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The Ambitious Guest This parable reinforces the importance of humility. Once, Jesus told a parable. Jesus said that it was better to be modest than to have pride or to impress other people. To explain this, he gave the example of a wedding feast. He said, If one is invited to a feast, then one should not look around for the best seat. This is because it is possible that one might be asked to move somewhere further down the table by the host to accommodate a more significant guest. This would prove to be awkward for him. But if in the beginning itself, one takes a seat at the far end of the table, it might be possible that the host would ask him to move to a better place. In this way, his prestige would increase. He would feel honored. The Grand Feast one day, Jesus told his followers a story. A rich man decided to give a grand feast to his friends. The invitations were sent and preparations were made. Then the rich man sent his servants to go and fetch him guests. One by one, the guests started making excuses for not attending the feast. By the end, each guest had refused to come or made an excuse. On hearing this from his servants, the rich man was furious. He ordered his servants to search the streets and the alleys for the poor and beggars and bring them to his feast. The rich man said, Not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Jesus said, Like the rich man's story, God would offer his kingdom to those who believed. Lessons by Jesus There were many people who wanted to become the followers of Jesus. But Jesus always used to tell them that it was not easy. Like a builder, one must first make the plan, examine the cost and then start the work. Working without a plan would lead to many problems. Anyone who wants to build a temple for God in his heart must first examine the commitment required. Jesus gave another example, that of a king going to war. 
no king would march his army into the battlefield without first making a plan and weighing the pros and cons. If his army is small, then he might try to avoid the war and think of other peaceful means. Jesus concluded, You are ready to become my follower only if you are able to give up everything that you love the most. The Vineyard Owner Once, Jesus told the parable of a man who owned a vineyard. The owner needed workers to pick the grapes. So, he went to the marketplace to hunt for workers. He saw some idle men. He said, Work for me in my vineyard and in return I will pay you one silver coin. The men agreed happily. The man went thrice to the market to get workers to his vineyard. In the evening, the owner told his servant to pay the workers. He said, Pay first to those who started last. However, the workers who had been working since early morning did not like this. They felt that they should be paid more as they had come first. They complained about this to the owner. But the owner replied, You are great to work at the price I offered. You are all equal in my eyes. Similarly, in God's eyes, everyone is equal. Jesus feeds 5,000. Once, about 5,000 people gathered to hear Jesus' gospel. It was starting to get late and none of the people had supper yet. The disciples came to Jesus and said, There is no food around and it is getting late. We should send the people away to get themselves something to eat. But Jesus said, You can feed them here. The disciples exclaimed, This is impossible. So much of bread would cost us a fortune. Jesus saw a boy with a basket containing five small loaves of bread and two small fish. Jesus ordered one of his disciples to buy the food basket from the boy. Jesus took the loaves of bread and thanked God. Then the disciples passed around the bread and everyone could take as much as he wanted. He did the same with the fish. Even after all the people had eaten, there was still some food left. People realized how great Jesus was. The Persistent Widow Jesus told his followers a parable of a judge to teach them never to lose hope while praying to God. The judge never prayed to God. He also never cared for anyone. One day, a poor widow wanted justice, so she went to the judge. She had been cheated by someone. The judge paid no heed as she was poor. He shunned her. But the poor woman did not give up. She came to him every day. She pleaded to him to grant her justice. Finally, the judge agreed so that she might not wear him out. Jesus said, 
the moral being that we must never give up and keep praying if we have faith in god he will grant us justice then we will persistently cry out to him no matter how long it takes even if it is month or years because we have faith that god will grant justice the tax collector once jesus was in the town of jericho a man called zacchaeus rushed through the crowd to see jesus he was a tax collector however the huge crowd that often accompanied jesus made it hard to do so so he climbed up a lofty tree to get a better view jesus saw him on the tree he said to him zacchaeus come down from there I would like to visit your house today. Zacchaeus was overjoyed, but the people gathered there started grumbling. They did not like the tax collector, and it was bad that Jesus was visiting him. But when Jesus came to his house, Zacchaeus declared, "I will give half of all my wealth to the poor." I will pay back generously to all those whom I have cheated in the past. Jesus was happy to hear this and said, Today a soul has been saved. The Last Supper It was the time of the Passover feast. The supper was to be held in a house in Jerusalem. In the evening Jesus and his 12 disciples met in the house and sat down to eat. Jesus said, "I want to share this supper with you." He thanked God for the bread and shared it with the disciples and said, "Take this and eat it. This is my body." which is given for you After the meal he took a cup of wine He said This is my blood it is given for you Then they all took a sip from the cup Share all this to remember me he said At the end of the supper Jesus told his apostles I give to you a new commandment that you love each other even as I have loved you that you also love one another since then it has been an important christian tradition of sharing the bread and wine on the day of eucharist or the holy communion Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. After the meal, Jesus got up from the table and went to a different part of the room. He brought a large bowl. He poured water into it and began to wash the disciples' feet. Then he dried them with a towel. Peter was horrified on seeing his master perform such a lowly task. When his turn came, he loudly exclaimed, "I cannot let you wash my feet. If you do not let me wash your feet, then you cannot truly belong to me," said Jesus. Peter replied, Wash my feet. In fact, wash all of me. In the end, Jesus said that he had given all of them an example. 
He said that if he could perform such a lowly task as washing their feet, then they should also be prepared to wash one another's feet. Evil Judas Judas was in charge of the funds meant for Jesus' disciples and to help the poor. But everyone knew that he had helped himself from the funds. It was as if the devil had entered inside him. Six days before the Passover, Judas went to the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council. He knew that they wanted Jesus arrested. So he made a deal with them. He agreed to meet them after the supper and lead them to Jesus. In return, they agreed to pay him 30 pieces of silver. When Jesus mentioned that someone would betray him, John asked who it was. Jesus said it was the one to whom he was going to give the bread. Jesus gave the bread to Judas, telling him to do what he wanted to. Judas took the bread. He quietly left the supper. The other disciples thought he had gone to give some funds to the poor. Jesus in the Garden Jesus and his disciples walked to a garden called Gethsemane after having the supper. It was on the Mount of Olives. They often used to come there. It was their favorite place. He told his disciples to wait while he went to pray. He took Peter, James and John. He took them to keep a watch over him while he prayed. He was sad. He knew that a terrible fate awaited him. He prayed to God to take away his sufferings. He returned to find John, Peter and James fast asleep. He woke them up and said, Could you not stay awake for even one hour? They were ashamed. Again, Jesus went to prayer. Again the disciples felt drowsy and soon went off to sleep. When it happened a third time, Jesus exclaimed, No matter, the hour has come. The traitor is here. Jesus is captured. Judas went to the garden where Jesus was with men armed with swords and clubs. He went and kissed Jesus. This was the signal the men had been waiting for and they quickly grabbed Jesus. He looked sadly at Judas and remarked that he was surprised that he would be betrayed by a kiss. The men took Jesus. Simon Peter in anger took out his sword and cut off the ear of one of the men. Jesus said to him, Simon, you must not do that. Those who live by the sword often die by it. He then healed the servant's ear and walked over to his captors. The disciples did not know what to do. They were afraid that they might be arrested for being with Jesus, so they quickly left. Peter and John were the only disciples who followed Jesus. Judas's Remorse Jesus was to be executed. 
Judas heard the verdict and was guilty. His greed had got the better of him. So, Judas went to the priests with the silver coins they had bribed him with. On entering the sanctuary of the temple, he said, Please take this money. I have made a big mistake. Do not kill Jesus. He is an innocent man. But the priests did not pay heed. They had made the decision. So Judas threw the coins on the floor. He was so guilt driven that he decided to kill himself. And so he hanged himself. The priests decided to use Judas's money to buy some land and convert it into a graveyard for foreigners. It was blood money, so they could not put it in the temple treasury. This place was known as the Field of Blood. Peter's Denial Peter and John followed Jesus as he was taken away. The men took Jesus to a high priest Annas. John knew Annas so he went inside to talk to him. Peter waited outside. A maid saw him and asked, Are you one of the disciples? Peter replied, No. Near him, some guards were standing by the fire. One of the guards asked him, You were with Jesus, weren't you? Peter denied this again. Then, another guard claimed that he had seen Peter with Jesus in the garden. A furious Peter replied, No, I was not with him in the garden or anywhere else. As soon as Peter said these words, a cock crowed loudly. And suddenly, Peter remembered that Jesus' prophecy had really come true. Jesus had once said to Peter that he would deny him three times before a cock crowed. Jesus is brought before King. Jesus was brought before the Roman governor of Judea Pontius Pilate for final questioning. The priest told him that Jesus had caused a lot of turmoil amongst the people from Galilee to Jerusalem. At the mention of Galilee, Pilate asked Jesus if he belonged to Galilee, Jesus replied, Yes. Galilee was ruled by King Herod. So Pilate sent Jesus to King Herod for giving the judgment. King Herod had heard a lot about Jesus. He knew that Jesus had powers. King Herod was keen to meet Jesus. He wanted Jesus to show him his miracles. When Jesus was presented in front of King Herod, he kept asking Jesus many questions. But Jesus did not reply to any of them. He remained silent. No amount of pressure made him reveal anything. In the end, as King Herod could find nothing against Jesus, he sent Jesus back to Pilate. Jesus is taken to Pilate again. Once again, Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. Pilate jointly called the chief priests, rulers and people and said to them, 
you brought me this man as the one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in front of you. I have found no truth in your charges against him. Neither has Heroid, for he sent him back to us. As can be seen, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. Pilate could see that Jesus was a good man and had not done anything wrong. He suggested that Jesus be flogged and then released. But the priest did not like this. They wanted Jesus to be crucified. Pilate asked Jesus, You claim to be the king of the Jews, are you? Jesus calmly replied, So you say. Barabbas and Jesus It was customary to release a prisoner chosen by the people during the Passover festival. Pilate went to the people and asked, Who should be released? Barabbas, the rebel and murderer, or Jesus? Pilate was hoping that the people would ask for Jesus to be released. But the priests had already told the people what to say. The people replied, We want Barbarous to be released. Pilate was not surprised, for he knew how jealous the priests were of Jesus. He did not want to sentence Jesus to death. So Pilate asked the crowd again, do you want me to release whom you call the king of Jews? No, we want Barbarous. Crucify Jesus, the crowd replied. Pilate was afraid that riots would start, so he gave in to their demand. Then he called for a bowl filled with water. He publicly washed his hands and announced, Take note, I am innocent of Jesus' blood. Pilate tries again. The soldiers took Jesus to their quarters where they made him wear a purple robe and a crown of twisted thorns on his head. Then they made fun of him. They mockingly knelt before him and said, Hail the King of Jews. They beat him and spat at him. Then when they got tired, they dressed him again. Meanwhile, Pilate still did not want an innocent man to be crucified. Hoping to awaken some pity for Jesus, Pilate brought him in front of the people with the crown of thorns and the purple robe upon him and said, Look at this man. I have found no case against him. I cannot sentence him to death. But the hard-hearted crowd shouted, Crucify him! Pilate had no other option but to give in to the crowd. So he handed Jesus over to the gods for crucifixion. Crucifixion of Jesus The soldiers led Jesus towards a hill called Golgotha outside Jerusalem. He wanted to be crucified there. They made him carry the cross on his back. Jesus was nailed to the cross by the gods and then set upright on the ground. Many people had gathered to see him. Several others 
were lamenting. Among the crowd were Jesus' mother, Mary, and his closest disciple, John. Before he died, Jesus prayed to the Lord, Father, please forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He then looked at John and said, John, from today, Mary will be your mother. Then he looked at Mary and said, Mother, consider John to be a son from now on. Jesus could not handle the pain any longer and said, It is finished. That is when Jesus bowed his head and went to heaven. John took Mary to his house and took care of her from that moment onwards. The Burial After Jesus had died on the cross, one of his followers, Joseph, took permission from Pilate to bury Jesus' body. He and another disciple, Nicodemus, carried Jesus' body. Nicodemus had brought a concoction of myrrh and alloys. Both of them anointed the body of Jesus with this mixture and wrapped him in a piece of clean cloth. After this, Joseph and Nicodemus put Jesus in a newly built tomb. They then closed the tomb with a huge boulder. Many people were waiting outside. Mary Magdalene was one of them. On the other hand, the Jewish leaders went to Pilate. They requested him to seal the tomb and put guards near it day and night to be sure that none of Jesus' disciples tried to steal his body. They knew that Jesus had said that he would rise after three days. Pilate agreed. The priest sealed the tomb and the guards were placed outside keeping a strict vigil. Jesus has risen. Soon after sunrise on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and one of her friends went to the tomb. But to their surprise, the boulder of the tomb had been removed. They went inside the tomb and lo, they were shocked to see that Jesus' body had disappeared. The tomb was empty. Both women were terrified. All of a sudden, two angels came there. Mary and her friend could not understand what was happening. The angels told them to stop looking for Jesus as the Son of God had already risen. Bewildered, Mary and her friend went to Peter and John. They told them what had happened. Peter and John did not believe them, but nevertheless rushed to the tomb. They too did not find the body. The cloth that Jesus had been wrapped in was folded. Jesus had indeed risen from dead itself. Doubting Thomas After rising from the dead, Jesus went to meet his disciples. One of the disciples, Thomas, was not there. Although the door was locked, yet Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said to them and showed them the marks on his hand and on his side. 
The disciples were delighted to see the Lord again. Afterwards, they told Thomas about Jesus' visit. But he did not believe it to be true. He wanted to see the holes and touch Jesus himself before believing that Jesus had risen. A week later, Jesus appeared to the disciples again. And this time, Thomas was there. The door was locked as before. Suddenly, Jesus was there among them. Touch the holes in my hand, said Jesus, as he showed Thomas the nail holes. Now stop doubting and believe, said Jesus. You are my Lord and God, said Thomas. To Emmaus, two of Jesus' disciples were going from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. As they talked about the terrible things of the past few days, Jesus himself joined them. But the man did not recognize him. Jesus asked, Why are you so sad? They replied, Jesus of Nazareth has been put to death. Haven't you heard? Jesus responded, Didn't they say that the Messiah should suffer and then be glorified? Then he explained to them what the prophets had foretold. As they reached Emmaus, the two disciples invited Jesus to supper. When they sat down to eat, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and gave it to them. And at that moment, the disciples recognized him. But the same moment, Jesus disappeared. The two disciples returned to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples this Wonderful news! Peter is forgiven. One night, several disciples went fishing. But by dawn, they had not caught even a single fish. Suddenly, Jesus called out, Have you got anything? They did not recognize him and replied, No. He said, throw the net again and you will catch some fish. They did so and the net was full of fish. It is the Lord, said John. Peter swam to meet Jesus. He had cooked fish for the disciples. After they had eaten, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter answered, Lord, you know I do. Feed my flocks, said Jesus. Then again he asked, Do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, Look after my flock. Then Jesus asked a third time, Do you love me? Peter got upset and replied, Lord, you know everything. Jesus said to him, Feed my flock. Suddenly, Peter understood and the shame of his earlier denial of Jesus was forgiven. Jesus is taken to heaven. Jesus remained with his disciples for 40 days. He taught his disciples many things and told them that he would visit again. He said, Soon, 
you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and receive the power of God. You will tell my story to the people in Jerusalem and to people all over the earth. Then he raised his hands to bless them. While they were still looking at him, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While they were staring at Jesus went up, two men clothed in white stood beside them. They said to the disciples, Why do you look like that? Jesus has been taken to heaven. One day he will return in the same way as you have seen him go. The disciples were very happy. They praised God and went back to Jerusalem. Matthew's the Twelfth Disciple The disciples went back to Jerusalem. They were namely Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, and Jude. Several women joined them, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. They used to pray together. One day, Peter spoke to all the disciples. Jesus had chosen him to take care of the church. Their first task, he said, was to appoint a disciple to take the place of the traitor Judas. Peter reminded the others of the qualification necessary for being a disciple. The candidate had to have been a follower of Jesus Christ from the time of Jesus' baptism by John until his accession into heaven. There were two to choose from, Joseph Barabbas and Matthias. The disciples prayed to God to guide them in choosing the right one. Then they drew lots and Matthias was chosen to be the twelfth disciple. The Holy Spirit Fifty days after the Passover came the harvest festival of Pentecost. People from many countries came to Jerusalem and were praying in the temple. Suddenly, the sound of a powerful wind filled the entire house. Flames of fire touched the people. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, different languages were heard. Each heard the story of Jesus in his own language. The people were scared. They asked, Though we are from different places, yet we can understand what is being said. Peter said, We have been filled by God's Holy Spirit as promised. This has been done so that we may tell what God has done for us. Jesus was a son of God, but he was handed over to the wicked who crucified him, and you all killed him by letting them do it. The people were upset by Peter's words. What should we do? they asked. Peter replied, You must be sorry and be baptized. That day, about 3,000 people were baptized. Peter heals the lame man. One afternoon, Peter and John went up the temple to pray. There they saw a crippled man sitting outside 
and begging for alms. The man had been lame by birth. The lame man begged in front of Peter and John as they walked past him. Peter looked at him and said, We do not have gold or silver to give you, but I will give you what I can. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and walk. So saying, Peter took the man's hands and helped him to get up. The man stood up at once in joy, praising God. Soon a big crowd gathered to see this astounding sight. Peter told them that there was nothing to be surprised about. It was the faith in Jesus that had made him walk. Then Peter began to talk about Jesus to the crowd. Arrest of Peter and John After the lame man was cured, Peter and John started preaching about Jesus. This made the priests of the temple very angry. They had them arrested and brought before the Jewish council. The judges asked, By whose authority were you preaching in the temple? Peter replied, I preach in the name of Jesus. It is through him that this lame man was cured. The council was amazed to see that the men were uneducated and simple. The man they had cured was a life example for the council. All they could do was warn the disciples not to preach again. They could not take the risk of distressing the crowd which had witnessed what had happened. Peter and the other disciples continued to preach at the gate of the temple every day. They cured the sick as well. The trial The priest did not like Peter preaching the people. So they put him and the other disciples in the prison. But the same night an angel set them free. They were then called by the Jewish council. They asked them, You were warned not to preach, but why do you continue to do so? Peter replied, Obedience to God is more important than obedience to man. God raised Jesus to be our Savior. We are His witnesses. This answer made the priest angry. They wanted death sentence for the disciples. But one of them, Gamaliel, advised the council to wait. He argued that if the disciples had indeed been blessed by God, then that God would protect them as well. If not, then they and their cause would simply fade away. So the council had the disciples beaten and set free. The happy disciples rejoiced as they had suffered for Jesus and continued their preaching. The Death of Stephen As the work grew, the disciples needed help. Some men were chosen for help. One of these was Stephen who was filled with the Holy Spirit. He began to work many miracles. He also made many enemies. One day, he was charged for speaking against God. 
he was arrested and brought before the Jewish council. When they looked at Stephen, they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The chief priest asked him, Do you agree that what the priest did is true? Stephen answered, The chosen people have always misinterpreted the prophets sent by God. You all have tried to keep God in a building and refused to accept the Holy Spirit. The angry priest took Stephen away and had him stoned. As he was dying, Stephen prayed, Lord, receive my spirit. Do not hold the sin against them. The blinding light, Saul hated the followers of Jesus. So, he was on his way to Damascus to arrest them. Suddenly, there was a blinding flash of light. A scared Saul fell on the ground. He then heard a voice saying, Saul, why do you pursue me and my followers? A bewildered Saul asked, Who spoke? The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you pursue. Get up and go to the city. There you will know what will happen to you. When the light vanished, Saul got up. He could not see anymore. As he could not see, his friends had to guide him to the city. Saul was unable to see a thing for three days. He could neither eat nor drink. All he did was pray and wait for what would happen to him. Saul is baptized. There was a follower of Jesus named Ananias. Jesus appeared to him in a dream and said, Go to Saul's house. Give him back his sight. Ananias had heard about Saul's hatred. He questioned Jesus as to why he was helping Saul as he had caused so much pain to the Jews. Jesus answered, You must do as I have chosen him to work for me and make my name known to people of all nations. So Ananias went to meet Saul. He saw Saul praying. He placed his hand on Saul and told him that he was sent by Jesus to cure him and to fill him with the Holy Spirit. At once, Saul could see again. Ananias also baptized Saul and gave him some food and water. Saul changed his name to Paul. He started preaching about Jesus. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Book House.